this year is going to be a very different race in which the wind funnels and the big leaves around the islands are going to be key. Uh, basically, there is a big front um, on the Atlantic that is disturbing the trades. And so, if we see in the screen, they have the normal trades uh, to the east of uh, the race course. Then there is a big disturbed area with light winds. And then to the north, there is the north, uh, the front here is the new north east winds coming. So three flows really, the old trades, the sort of in-between suction here towards the Panama and the new trades here in the north. Now, um, just looking at the time here in the left corner, so this is uh, early morning on Monday, so before the start. And uh, as we scroll through the hours here, you can see so this is Monday evening. Actually, this wall of the old trades is stalling. So that is something very unique for this year that we're not going to race in the normal trades. So we're going to race in this sort of in-between northeast flow, which is pretty fragile. Um, so I think for the tacticians and the navigators, it will be a much more tricky race than the normal trade wind races that we've seen. Now, so this is Monday evening, and then as we walk through this, we can see that this northerly flow, this new flow in the north, is actually compressing uh, and bunching together with the in-between trades here uh, in the middle. So that is good news, because the winds are going to strengthen, um, and we're going to have some nicer sailing conditions. For the faster boats, the uh, transition between the, the new trades in the north and the old trades here is going to make some really confusing uh, and challenging conditions for crossing to the southern section. Now as we go further, actually what is happening is that these two flows here in the north, they merge, so it becomes more consistent. And also because the breeze, the old trades and the new trades are more coming in line, they are easily have a more easy time to converge and we get a more consistent flow. So this is a Tuesday evening and now on Wednesday you can see that actually as the, the new flow has rotated to the east, it's almost becoming parallel to the, the trades, to the regular trades and this big zone here that was all disturbed is also merging and we get to a much more normal situation by Wednesday afternoon. Um, then for the, the smaller boats, they will be looking at the increasing breeze on Thursday. So, you know, looking at the handicap, this could be a small boat race. Good news for if, you, if you're in the 40-footer. Um, and by uh, Thursday, um, basically the trades aren't very strong but they are there and we're looking at the more normal wind direction of uh, due east. Right, so with the winds being slightly more northeast than normal, um, if we go here to the start section, this area here is uh, just after the start has some high cliffs inshore. And this wind direction that we're seeing is pretty much perfect for an acceleration here all along this shore. Um, and this acceleration is really important because the wind looks to be pretty light. Only seven, maybe if we're lucky, nine, ten knots. So any little boost in the wind direction that you can get is uh, worth gold. So uh, we expect the sailors to um, really look for the accelerated flow along the cliffs just uh, uh, after start. Uh, with this wind direction it's a beat, um, so there's uh, going to be a lot of short tacking. The interesting thing that we've seen uh, uh, over the years as well is that in addition to the uh, stronger accelerated winds, 
there's also a bit of a relief of the current. Uh, there's a general flow uh, because of the trade winds from east to west uh, along these islands and going in, sh in shore certainly again with light winds, uh, current uh, relief is going to be important. Then, uh, so it's the first beat here until you get to the top of the island. Now this leg traditionally is a spinnaker leg, but because we have lighter and more left, more northeast winds, this looks more like a tight, tighter angle, which I'm sure the, the trimmers and sailmakers are gonna love because it is all about do you have the right code zero? Do you have the right sail uh, to go fast at this angle? Um, so uh, at the top of the island here, it's sail choice time. And basically you want to make sure you pick the right one because any sail change, double sail change is a loss. So we're going along here. Uh, normally here with the wind a little bit more from the southeast, you get this big lift. Uh, and so traditionally you would be looking to go below one line and then come up. Now with the lighter winds this year and more, more northeast, we have to be a little bit careful here because of the lee here of the island. So with the wind being more northeast like this, the, it is a pretty big blockage for the wind and so the lee could be uh, quite severe. Uh, again though, if you think of it stra strategically, um, you want to be very careful not to go too far up in here because now you have to somehow try and jibe out or find your way uh, down to the mark. Um, I would say my first best guess here would be for sailors to look at maybe rump line or slightly below and and uh, get to the mark this way. So I think that the, the, this year that, that last approach to the mark can be very tricky. Okay, going then into the next leg to Nevis. So with this wind direction, um, it's actually a run, a long run down. Now the interesting thing is that obviously you first want to get out of the lee and the sailors need to judge whether actually you can get to some of the wind that might be coming along the northern tip of the island or where it's best to try and see if you can um, get, get here to the wind which comes from this side and which long term is probably going to be more consistent. Um, this year what I would uh, be looking a lot at is all these funnels around the island. So the, uh, the air is really stable, much more stable than in traditional uh, trade wind years and so you want to really make sure that you get to these accelerated flows around the islands and really avoid the lees. So okay what are we looking then for strategy? Well there's another typical acceleration here around this island so it is not uncommon if we look at the course that to go sort of here and work all the way down there and approach like that. I think working both this funnel and the second, this is typically a very good funnel, could be very good and a, a very good uh, signal to look at is if, if there's a convergence zone here with clouds that extends from the island uh, because along it you get a nice shift and hence pressure. So I think this, you know, for a tactician and the navigator is going to be a, maybe a bit stressful, but a very interesting leg. So uh, find your way down here, uh, typically here around Nevis, because it's such a round island. Again, there's some really nice acceleration. Uh, round islands, the, the wind just rotates around it. So for the last bit of this first section of the course, try to again here work the funnel along the shore. It's really deep, 
right and up in, until the cliffs. Uh, it's nighttime typically, so uh, you know it's it's hard to judge how far you are from the cliffs. But you you really want to work the inshore uh, route there and do a couple of jibes. So yet you, you are in the lead after this first section of the course. Okay, the second section. Uh, so this here with this northeast breeze still is going to be a bit tricky. Uh, basically we have a lot of obstructions in the way. These are like rocks in the, in the flow of water. The, this is a very uh, square uh, bit of land whereas this was really round and the wind just goes around it. This is terrible and so is this for wind shadows. So uh, this area here especially and this is some highland here as well and St. Eustatia is, is, is quite known for Big Lee as well. So it is on this leg here from Navis to Seba. Uh, it's, um, it's a bit of a sail choice again. The danger is the one thing that you do want to avoid is to somehow go high above uh, the rump line and have to go through all these leads. I think that would be a challenging course and once you get stuck high how do you get out? So a more typical one is to maybe use these fans between these islands to actually work down below rump line and set up here for a, uh, a more southerly course away from the lease and then come up here to Seba. Um, I think it will be difficult because there's going to be pretty variable winds with the wind coming through the different gaps a lot of shifts and obviously uh, on the reach you want to minimize distance uh, so this is where the front of the boat that uh, does all the boat handling when sails up and down it's going to be busy trying to make sure that you um, use these puffs well and don't lose too much distance to the mark and keep keep going to Seba uh, whilst looking out for not getting trapped in the lee of the islands above Rumbling. Now whereas these two islands in Stasia and St. Kitts are very much big blocks uh, walls that block the wind Seba on the other hand is incredibly round again and tall and the wind just goes around it. So uh, typically it's been um, very good just to go in really close even though you think you're already touching the wall um, because the transition is uh, um, really small you go in short. The other interesting fact why that why you wouldn't make a big uh, deviation there is that Seba is uh, I believe is something like uh, two kilometers high it's really tall so if you think of the Lee how far that extends in these stable conditions it goes all the way out there so even if you try to round it wider thinking that you're doing a good job staying away from the island you still will have the turbulence and the Lee of the island and uh, sometimes actually it's worse being first uh, further out because the the local fumbling along the island happens really within the within the mile. So um, yeah, staying close and be ready for the upwind to Saint Bart. This is really a, a wall that comes to you, and um, uh, it's then a long, long beat. Interesting because beats obviously have options. Do you go left or right? Now, in the beginning, that doesn't really, uh, that doesn't seem to be much difference. Uh, the difference comes at the end. And again, as this is stable winds with a lot of funnels, we have to think about these bends and funnels around the island. Now, for a lot of sailors who have done St. Bart, actually, typically, uh, doing some, uh, some tacks in here and along the shore, out of the waves, works 
and uh, get to the top of the island that way. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of boats here to take a sort of a northerly course. Um, I would expect that there is some turbulence of this island, so some shift to play. Uh, but the challenge would be to keep the big picture in mind and uh, really play one or the other of the funnels, um, not something in between. So um, we'll see. Uh, my guess is that this will be quite strong here, this funnel. And that will take us to the top of St. Bart. Okay, so we've made it around the top of uh, uh, St. Bart here. Again, there's, now we're on a sort of a reach, uh, almost downwind here to St. Martin. Now we know from uh, racing around uh, St. Bart a lot that there are some really good funnels here. Um, I think that actually compared to normal, because the wind is, even though it has rotated a little bit, so we're still talking, I think that's good to remember, we're only talking about 10, 11 knots. You know, this is not the strong 25 knot trade winds. It's, it's a very different race. Um, but, uh, so this is, is the run, maybe just. In any case, uh, you want to go either straight line or try to work the lower end to stay again in this funnel. Um, particularly here along uh, St. Bart. Then you get the middle section, not much happening. Uh, whereas here, again, funnel around the, the tip of the island, but then. Um, normally, with the wind slightly more east, actually this doesn't really uh, try get too much trouble, uh, too much lee here. But now with the wind, even though it's rotated a little bit uh, more right already, uh, I think this year, this section here can be quite difficult. There's a high mountain range here, and so there's a big lee extending here. This, this area here is flatter, so it's easier. Uh, and the whole trick is, you know, how do we get through this lee and through to the funnel coming in on the other side? Um, difficult. Uh, is there a golden rule? Mm, not sure. Um, the one thing again is, you know, to try to avoid to get stuck high in the the lead. The safer approach would be maybe already um, staying out further here, so you have some angle to come up with your code zero or jib, um, and and go fast on a fast angle through the lead. Um, Probably daytime, so for most boats, so it's quite easy to see. But um, uh, the the it's binoculars out and trying to see where is the how is this shape of this lee and how can I cross it best. Um, yeah, difficult part of a bit difficult section, much more difficult than normal because normally we, we have this more southerly flow and 20 knots, and you still get a little bit of the lee uh, this year because it's more northeast and lighter. This could be a, a very difficult section. Right, um, at least you're going along a nice Dutch Dutch island, sure, you know. Um, so, now with this uh, direction, the section here to the top is basically a beat. And um, I know when I raced with uh, one of the big boats here, they were upset with me because I asked them to tack all the time. but. Uh, I think it's really important um, if, the, if you want to manage your energy, make sure you have your crew rested on the earlier sections and have them sharp here. Short tacking, hitting every headland, staying in the funnel, uh, I think it's going to be an opportunity for, for some good gains. The other reason is, once you're at the top and around here, easy sailing. You know, the, the wind is slightly more northeast than normal. And so when we are uh, going down here, uh, okay, first is maybe just a fetch, but certainly this, which is uh, normally a, a jib fetch, uh, you know, something like 60, 70 true an angle. Now with the wind slightly more northeast, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you can uh, do a lot of cut zero work along this, uh, this leg here. So, um, having your nice, uh, uh, slightly more upweight and orientated Kajero could be a big gain. Um, 
if you only brought your heavy uh, sales uh, inventory for strong winds could be a challenge okay so but this is where you, where you rest your crew because uh, we have one more little hurdle here the lee of Antigua with some convergence uh, basically it heads on this side and lifts up to this side uh, so there's a little bit of detailing to do here where there you know instead of changing sails here and stay on course you might just take a bit of that lift and go to the next header and then go down um, the good thing is this is uh, uh, typically very well marked by a cloud line so you can see it already from far out um, but again, you know, this is where you maybe want to make sure you have enough guys on deck so you can anticipate the shift and the, and the possible um, sail change. Um, and that will be the, uh, the end of the sort of long lag and resting before we get set up for the all important lee of Guadeloupe. Yeah, again, um you know, I, I understanding absolutely everything you're saying, and having done Hardikin and what have you, I fully un fully understand where you're coming from there. And it's quite interesting because this is a different race, and you're mm. pointing at this section as a difficult part of the course. You know, as opposed to getting the shit kicked out of a saber or yeah. the jibe at Barbuda or something like that. This is not usually a difficult part of the course, no. is it? Yeah, but I think you can get really stuck. Hmm. And I know, yeah, that's incredibly high mountains there. Yeah. And you've got Pelican Rock there, and it from Pelican Rock up to past the airport, basically. Um, yeah, it's yeah. And how far out do you go? And then you've got to get inshore when you get round the airport or the round yeah. the top there. Yeah, you know, that's uh, that's going to be interesting. Okay. So then we just do need to just need to ID this. So what, yeah, what yeah. are we doing here? So this is the section. Uh, so after crossing the convergence with Antigua and through the lee of um, Guadeloupe and up to Le Dijerat. Okay. Dijerat. So this is uh, section four, which is the lee of Antigua and in the region of Montserrat all the way around through the Lee of Guadeloupe to the exit at Le Desdirat. Right, so again, as a reminder, we are still racing in slightly more northeast and slightly lighter winds than normal. Um, so, what is the trickiest area of Guadeloupe? Well, it is basically, here are the tall mountains. This section here, yes, it is relatively, you know, it's a couple of hundred meters high, but this is 1500 meters, and that's where the lee extends from. So, already here, you have to start to really think about your approach from, uh, for Guadeloupe. So, even though that's, uh, that's uh, still a good 50 miles out. Um, the interesting thing with this more northeast one, northeast flow, is that actually the wind and we've seen this in the past, extends very far along here, it does a big bend. So again, you know, there's this, this funnel. And what it does is that normally with the wind direction which is more due east, the lee extends already here. And just like Seba, because this is very tall and the air mass is quite um, stable the lee is going to extend very far so going completely around the lee is going to be nearly impossible because it extends just too far offshore the other thing that we have to consider in our approach already here uh, for a trajectory is that the wind here is going to do another wrap around now normally that wrap around extends all the way here um, and you really are on the beat so going further offshore is really bad in, in such uh, wind conditions because now you're on the beat complete to here this time because the wind is again a little bit more northeast instead of the southerly 
the the wall is more here so you will have uh, further to go to meet the new winds okay so initially this would uh, and we have seen boats do that in the past might suggest something like that maybe not all that uh, uh, that uh, surprising a choice uh, certainly because if you are coming in here actually yeah you now have a downwind and VMG angle whereas this guy that this one went down had a real fast angle here all the time okay there's a little bit of a lee here but we know that that is not too difficult um, and actually has a fast angle here possibly slight uh, less lee so I think that that uh, opens up the game a little bit for for this uh, this season. Now, the traditional route, however, is to go above Montserrat. Maybe work a little bit down so that you anticipate the lift here, and then end up just going really really close in shore, and then until you get the wind. So, what is the thought behind this strategy? if you go really in shore. Well, um, that has to do with, uh, that strategy certainly works in two scenarios. And it has to do with the timing that you're gonna be there. One is if you arrive at nighttime. So then this lee is extending much further offshore, is much bigger. So this longer route uh, doesn't give as much benefit because the lee will not be um, very narrow here will just be big um, whereas here in shore we can use the catabatic winds so which are the, is the night breeze the the cold air that is coming from the mountains now that extends only maybe up to three miles of shore it's always that's very hard to forecast but certainly it won't extend 10 miles of shore so the strategy for uh, nighttime is to go in really, really closely and, uh, and take advantage of the catabatic winds. Are they going to be there? Not sure. It's, uh, it's not a complete given. Uh, the other reason to go in really closely in shore is if you arrive here in the afternoon. So uh, after sort of midday, one o'clock, up until six in evening. Now why is that? Well actually um, what we've seen here is that there's there's often a return flow with a south westerly breeze. Um, so just like a part of that is like a rock in the water you know you get the return flow but also we think that the sea breeze here uh, along the wall, there's nice uh, wall uh, hills that heat up and create the suction effect. And that is why you would have a slightly better breeze inshore southwest. So you'll be completely on the opposite tack that can help you squeeze through and get uh, through to the new winds uh, on the inshore course. Wow. Lots can happen there. Once you're through, though, uh, this section should be much easier. Life is good again. Um, hopefully we can rest the crew a little bit here on this leg uh, to the Grand Ile. Uh, they are relatively low, relatively small, and you just want to go around it. Don't uh, waste any difference, uh, distance. Okay. Then this used to be, in normal years, a horrible long beat in 20 knots. Now, not so much. Uh, you know, there's still probably going to be some uh, waves, uh, so you're looking for some flat water. But again, it is all about the wraparound breeze and the fun along the shore. So in this wind direction, that really sets up nicely, geographically, to create funnels along these shores. In a southerly, typically there's better breeze here and less breeze here. In a northeasterly, like we are seeing now, we can have good acceleration here, flat water, possibly current relief. And so I wouldn't be surprised if the majority of the fleet is 
looking to get in shore and work this shore and work this shore all the way to Le Desirad. Good news, not as horrible a beat as normal years. Right, so the trades have continued to build a little bit and uh, are further east now. So just as a reminder, um, at the start the wind was up here. So we've had at least a 30 degree rotation and so it's a slightly different scenario. Um, this beat probably here in the, that we spoke about in the last leg has uh, taken out some energy and we're in uh, for most boats in day three so fatigue will start in and um, I think we need to be uh, conscious about our energy uh, and make sure that on the approach here and this last beat to the finish we have people fresh so this leg here try to rest people um, it's uh, with these uh, more stable conditions there should be less pull so um, it should be pleasant sailing uh, what, what are we looking at maybe angle wise um, it's uh, more upwind than normal so it's not uh, your normal A3 or A4 spinnaker here uh, but more code zero possibly even a jib I think it looks like a, something like a code zero angle okay we have to remember again here the local effect at um, um, Barbuda, which is actually, even though it's an island, um, flat island, there's always a good acceleration here and uh, the lift. Uh, so whereas before, as we discussed, you know, the, the wind was more northerly, now because the wind is rotated further right, this funnel is extending here. And I think you have to be conscious again that we for this last part um, can work a little bit lower so that you can come up maybe that's a little bit exaggerated but it also helps you uh, and I've seen this before to work a little bit more of the sorry of the funnel around here so this just a tiny little bit more breeze slightly more headed here than up here certainly I've rarely seen boats win that and do well that have gone above rum line. So uh, maybe point and shoot here. Uh, I, I would avoid dribbling b below the ley line because there's only headers and bad stuff happening here. So certainly point and shoot and maybe work a little bit of the funnel here and set up so that you have a good angle into the Buddha mark. Right, almost there. Come on, hang in there. One more sail change. Uh, and that is actually the key here for the afterguard and the trimmers to pick the right sail for this leg because remember we lifted here so if you just look at your numbers uh, and your sail chart uh, probably you uh, choose a sail that is you know for more head of breeze but as you go out here the breeze lifts here again so if you've gone for a sail that takes you nicely on course here you're probably going to end up being lifted above and need to go down so you better have uh, just to think about it okay I might go a little bit lower below here and then get lifted up anyway with my sail so if you're between two sail uh, sails in your sail choice I would urge uh, edge towards the one that goes a little bit lower earlier and then comes up Right, so nice sailing along here, uh, nice reach. Um, sometimes you, I think we need to have another look uh, here at this convergence zone, where that is. You probably have to cross it so, sort of halfway, and you can expect on the other side, because it is a convergence zone, the wind from this side. So a little header here. Uh, really have a look at this cloud band. Typically it's, it's very well defined um, and obviously you want to cross it as quick as you can because underneath it is not so good and into the new wind. Okay, Redonda, that uh, tall little cliff uh, that you know you just have to get close in and, and round uh, because you're going back to Antigua. Try not to make a big detour there. Uh, okay, you might be experience some light winds but it's only short time and you can typically coast through it um, and then upwind I've always 
hated this beat and pretty much everybody else because typically as a tactician you know you have no choice but to get everybody up and then get them hiking uh, when we're all tired. Uh, so what I've typically seen is that working somewhere along the convergence line works. Uh, why? Out here there's not not that much. Uh, typically you know there's, there's no shift, nothing to play. Whereas here along the, the convergence line there's a good couple of shifts to play, there's probably some accelerated flow and it already sets you up for this last part along the uh, Antigua shore to the finish where we're certainly with this wind direction which is slightly more left you should have a nice uh, the, the wind just follows the island and accelerates here so play every headland and if you are small enough a boat just go inside the reef here at the bottom of the island uh, get current relief get further into the funneled flow and uh, make some nice gains so there we have it, um, a year with slightly less breeze and um, a lot more local effects, a lot more bends, a lot more funnels that we have to play with than uh, the normally gusty, squally trade winds um, that we are used to.